In this video I will tell you why the Second World War started in 1939 and not before. It has to do with the biggest discovery of the 20th century in 1938. A full-scale world war consumes a lot of oil and Hitler didn't have any. There is no oil to be drilled for in Germany. England got its oil, from, its oil from the US and Russia had its oil from the Caucasus region. Then the Bush Rockefeller Texas Oil Company Standard Oil found the world's biggest oil reserves in Saudi Arabia on March the 3rd 1938. So Hitler knew he could start his war. It only needed the time to stock the oil in Germany to guarantee a long war. And here we can see the uh, British royal family who came immediately when the oil was discovered. And in 1915, the Treaty of Darin in Saudi Arabia already had become a protectorate of the British Empire. So they only had to look for the fitting ruler to make him king of the desert, making Saudi Arabia a puppet regime of the British Empire. There they are again, the British royal family in 1938 in Saudi Arabia. Oh, they got filthy rich there. Then they. And here we go on March the 4th, 1938, only one day after the biggest discovery of the 20th century and making World War II and the murder of 50 million people possible. So, a week later, only after the, dis the biggest discovery of the oil in Saudi Arabia on March the 3rd. On March the 12th, 1938, Hitler annexed Austria, which was in fact the beginning of World War II. As a uh, consequence of the discovery of oil and uh, making World War II possible. Warships, bombers, fighter planes, armoured vehicles, tanks, lorries and SS motorcycles cost an enormous amount of oil and this oil came from Saudi Arabia for the Germans. Here we can see the uh, Saudi king in, uh, on August the 17th in 1935, the same one who did the Hitler salute visiting uh, Adolf in uh, 1938. So the, uh, the Saudi Arabs and the king knew exactly that exporting the war to Mr. Hitler it would cost the lives of millions of Europeans enabling the Muslim conquest of Europe and replacing all the dead Europe Europeans starting right after the war. From this moment on they started to stock enormous reserves of oil in Germany and most of all in Romania as can, see, as can be seen here all being made possible by the British Empire who already knew there was oil to be found in the desert and therefore took a wild, savage and murderous Bedouin out of his tent away from his goat hood and made him a king of the oil desert in 1932. Abdul Aziz Ibn Al Saud was so savage in fact that even the Turks and the Ottoman Empire didn't want him. He was notorious for drinking the blood of his dead adversaries. Oh, he looks a bit like a devil here with the two horns, doesn't he? Uh, in fact, here he's together with the fascist Italian army. Um, for the British Empire, he's trying to, trying to sell the, um, the oil to all, to all sides. So... Um, just the pharaohs can get rich of the uh, the European massacre. That's the uh, the main thing of the war. You know, just have the Europeans kill each other and and uh, exterminate each other. That was the whole idea. Well, look at the two horns. They look like the devil, doesn't it? The British crown financed the butcher, gave him a palace, 
and on September 1933 the Standard Oil Engineers started drilling for oil. Well here we can see the octagon again. Octogon. It's all over where the power is. This here is the first uh, tanker leaving uh, Saudi Arabia on April the 3rd, 30th, 1939. Uh, it has an American flag. So only one and a half months later after April the 30th, um, Ibn Saud, Al Saud, he sent his... Uh, Mr. Khalif Al Hut to see Mr. Hitler on June the 17th, 1939, in person. Now, why do you think the Arab who had just found the biggest oil reserve in the world came and see Hitler, who needed oil for his world war? Why do you think so? Well, Khalif Al Hut. Uh, he came discussing the petrol business, of course, because the Bedouin didn't want worthless paper money for his oil. Certainly not after the financial crisis of 1929. He told Adolf that he wanted gold and camels, and this is why the Nazis started looting gold all over Europe stealing the gold reserve from Poland, Czechoslovakia and other European countries and even taking it from the Jews' teeth. We can witness here the foundations being laid down between Muslims and Nazis which, hold, which holds on to this very same day. This video of the Arab visiting Adolf wasn't supposed to be shot since it was a top secret meeting. But as Eva Braun, Hitler's Germanic mistress, was so bored she was making videos all the time. And Hitler the liar never kept his promises to her. As he was full of empty promises to everyone and in particular to the Germans. The other guy with the bowler hat here seems to be introducing the, uh, the Arab to the Germans. Watch his hand like. Uh, he doesn't fit into the whole context here. He doesn't look very German. He doesn't have a uniform. So it might be uh, supposed that he's the, um, he's the sly Swiss banker here. The way he's smiling through his teeth and all that. It's the one who's putting up the whole deal. Right? Hitler, by the way, had this very non-Germanic way of thinking of women. A very Muslim way, just as Ibn al Saud, where a woman was supposed to shut up and obey a man's orders. Maybe Hitler even was a Muslim, who knows. So when the wench was filming, as we can see here, this is Eva Braun, with a lovely 16mm camera. When she was filming, nobody really took her serious, leaving us with one, if not the most important document of World War II. Al Saud's messenger, Khalif Al Hut, doing the Heil Hitler salute, coming to get his gold and camels. Just as we see his son, Fad Al Saud, Al Saud, here doing business with Standard Oil's Bush. Oh, look at them holding hands. Oh, isn't that lovely, isn't it? Ibn al Saud was, of course, of pharaonic origin already. Oh, otherwise, the ruling world of worldwide pharaohs, as you can see here, would never have made him a king in 1932. A goat's herd shepherd becoming king at once? Can you imagine? And as a king, Per A and a ruler, he automatically had to become a Freemason as well. And here we can see Ibn al Saud, the guy who did business with the Nazis selling the, the oil, and standing together with the, uh, with the English Queen. And watch, 
what he's wearing around his neck. Yes, a Templar's cross is one of them. It's a Freemason sign and it is from a pyramid. Uh, this guy is a pharaoh. And very soon after the pharaonic world of Freemasonry started, started complaining about the, uh, the Muslims throwing stones in Mecca during the Hajj. So finally uh, Fahd el Saud he orchestrated the death of 200 pilgrims in 2004 as a reason to get rid of the obelisks and its stoning by replacing them with three ovals as in the Oval Office and symbol of Isis and the womb only enabling stoning the wall and never the sacred oval itself. So with this and the inviting of NATO soldiers in Saudi Arabia, the Hajj and one of the pillars of Islam became invalid by the destruction of the Jamarat after the image of Muhammad, the inventor of Islam, threw seven, sto who threw seven stones at an obelisk 700 years ago. So now back to the Second World War and the oil. Only how get the oil to Germany during a world war? For this reason the Swiss Nazi Templars of Octogon, Switzerland produced a huge and neutral merchant navy on the Swiss flag under the camouflage of bringing food to the Swiss population and the British Per A aristocracy and American Freemasonry knew because they had set it all in place. Only the Russians didn't know. So here we can see it. We can read it here. This is a new Swiss vessel. They've got 41 very huge ships nowadays. And they had more during the Second World War. So here we can read it all. So Switzerland does have a navy. <laughs> Don't be mistaken. I mean, what's a, what's a Templar without a ship? You can't get to Jerusalem, can't he? Can he? So you can read it. The Second World War, what they did, bringing oil to the Germans. Oh, well, that's Switzerland. That's Octogon. It's the way they are. Then the oil got shipped from the desert in neutral sh Swiss ships to Italy who were part of the fascist alliance and finally the oil went through Switzerland into Germany. Um, well here we can read about it. Well of course not everything but you can read they had a, uh, a, 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 a there was a Swiss navy during the war. And, uh, well, they brought stuff to the Germans, they did. Oh, yeah. And back the same way, went stolen gold by the Nazis to the Gulf Arabs and al Sod. And after the war, Octogon, Switzerland and the Arab Gulf states were the richest people in the world. You see? King al Saud and his British puppet regime in Arabia always stayed very thankful to Switzerland where it has a lot of money, land, houses, banks, petrol stations and other businesses running where they spent each summer around Lake Geneva where the destroyers of Europe, Switzerland and the ones who sold the oil celebrate their victory over Europe and of course, it's very, very possible that Al, Al Saud arranged a scandal between Gaddafi and Switzerland in the Wilson Hotel about his son Hannibal and also the final downfall of Gaddafi and his oil rich Libya. Uh, Gaddafi has the, uh, uh, the, the Libyan tam oil is all over Switzerland. So I suppose when Mr. El Saud 
saw this during his holidays, he was not so pleased, was he? So here we can see the widely spread Libyan tam oil uh, in Switzerland, in Geneva. And um, yeah, I suppose Mr. El Sword, he was not so happy about that. So he might have well have been the, uh, the cause of uh, the strife between uh, Switzerland and Gaddafi and um, the reason of his final downfall. So you can see the uh, German Messerschmitt fighter plane of the uh, Swiss Air Force during World War II. And the Swiss probably got them for free um, for helping the oil from to, to get to Germany from Saudi Arabia. Um, Switzerland was the only country um, who got the Messerschmitt uh, 109E. Uh, um, well, the same as the Germans, so you see, well, there's no crime in the world against humanity and against the Europeans that does not pass through Octagon, Switzerland, and its Swiss Nazi Templars. Switzerland financed Hitler in 1923, and Hitler never attacked the giving hand who gave all the orders and provided oil to the war machine. Switzerland did it.